It's nice to meet the families of God in the global village who wish for heaven. I'm Do Hun Baek from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Bartholomew Tri, and I'll be in charge of hosting today's seminar. We welcome everyone who are attending the online seminar of Shincheonji, the parables of the secrets of heaven and the testimony of fulfillment. Through today's word, I hope that you will have a valuable time to check the meaning and the fulfillment of the secret of heaven and discover the kingdom of heaven. Then before the seminar, let us gather our hearts and pray to Father God. Dear Holy Father God who is full of love and grace, thank you for allowing life for us today. Especially at this time, please fill your great grace and love to all your children of faith around the whole world who are attending the Shincheonji online seminar, The Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and the Testimony of Fulfillment. Please help us to realize the truth by opening our eyes and ears at this time, so that all the families of God who hear this word can be together in heaven and be one in God forever. Today, it is a time when revelation is being fulfilled. Jesus is fulfilling the new covenant, sending the promised shepherd, the chairman who testifies according to what he has seen and heard and fulfilling all the prophecies. And until recently, the entire chapters of Revelation were testified and many pastors have entered into MOUs. After testimony up to Revelation 22, now the elementary course of the Revealed Theology, which is the parables of the secrets of heaven, is being testified plainly. May you be with the lips of the instructor so that both the messenger and the receiver may receive grace. We thank you for everything, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Following the last time of the parables of the secrets of heaven and the testimony of fulfillment, today the word of Lesson 8, the figurative light and lampstand, the blind, deaf, and close will be testified. 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. Let's find out when is the time of this night, when is the day, and also what is the reality of the spiritual blind and deaf through the Word of God. Let me invite instructor Su Hyun Yu from the Bartholomew tribe who will testify the word today. Hello, all pastors, theological students, and saints around the world who are carrying a life of faith with the hope of heaven. It is very nice to meet you. I am Su Yun Yu, a center instructor who learned the word from Bartholomew tribe, leader among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader learned from Chairman Man Hee Lee. All the pastors who are with us at this time, thank you for coming, you have come well. Through the word today, I sincerely hope that you will receive much grace. Today, we will look at lesson number 8, the figure of light and lampstand, the blind, deaf, and close. I think the pastors would already know about this well. Jesus spoke in parables in the four Gospels and the book of Revelation in accordance with the will of God's word. As you know, this is spiritual, not literal. Let's take a look at this all together today. Before starting the lecture, let's first look at the true meaning of the parables. Light is the word of life. The lampstand is spirit and worker. Blind and deaf is a person who does not understand the word. For clothes, firstly, the clothes or robes mean the heart, actions, and doctrine, and the wedding clothes or fine linen mean the righteous acts. 
Now let's check with the Bible how these answers came out. Firstly, let's study about the light. Let's all read the reference verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-6. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. Yes, thank you for reading. When will the words of 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-6 be fulfilled? This is the event that will take place on the day of the Lord, Hence, the time of the second coming of Jesus. It says there are two types of people at this time. It's the you group and the them group. As the them group think they are in peace and safety, destruction comes on them suddenly, and they cannot receive salvation. On the other hand, the you group are not in darkness, so Jesus does not come to them like a thief, and they are able to be saved. What kind of people are the ones who belong to the light that can receive Jesus? Through this time, we will find out about the spiritual light and also the people who belong to the light according to the Bible. In the Bible, there is physical light, but there is also spiritual light. God uses the physical things of the world and explains the spiritual things of heaven and the kingdom of heaven figuratively in parables. To find out about the spiritual light, let's look at firstly the physical light. The physical light, firstly, serves to illuminate. When you shine the light on an object or space, you can see what was inside of it, and you can discern what kind of state it is. Secondly, the light, it gives life to all things, so therefore, it symbolizes life. Thirdly, when we know about a certain field well, we also say, I'm very bright in that field. Bright at this time refers to the state of knowledge. On the contrary, darkness is a state without the light. Firstly, darkness, there is no light, it is dark. So you cannot tell what kind of state the things or space are in, you cannot discern. Secondly, for all things, if it does not receive the light, it will die, so darkness leads to death. Thirdly, when we don't know much about a certain field, we also use the expression, I'm in darkness in that field. So the darkness refers to the state of ignorance or not having knowledge. Now, let's take a look at the spiritual light and darkness that have these physical characteristics. The true meaning of light is the word of life. Now, we'll check why it is the word of life through the Bible. In John 1, 1 to 5, it says, The word from the beginning is God, and there is life in it, and that life is the light of men. Therefore, this word of life becomes a spiritual light. On the contrary, spiritual darkness is a state without the word of life, so it can be said, it is an ignorance without having the word. Therefore, spiritual light is the word of life, and spiritual darkness 
is ignorance of not having the word. If light is the word of life, then even the person with the word becomes the light. In John 12, verse 46, Jesus said, He came as the light of the world. Jesus, who received the word of life from God 2,000 years ago, is also the light. And the disciples who received the word from Jesus were also called the light in Matthew 5, verse 14. In summary, the light means the word of life and the person with the word. What happens when the light appears in the Bible? To learn about what happens when the light appears, we will go to the place where the light first appeared. Then where did the light first appear? That's right. It is Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis 1, 1 to 5, God creates the light on the first day. Before creating the light, the heaven and earth were in darkness. As God created the light, light and darkness were divided, and day and night were created. So we can see, light is a standard to discern light and darkness. And also, it also serves as a starting point for day and night. Then, let's check through the words of prophecy, what is the spiritual light. In the Old Testament prophecy of Isaiah 9 verse 1, it says that Galilee will be honored, and the people walking in darkness will see a great light. What is this light that will appear in Galilee at this time? The Old Testament prophecy was fulfilled at the time of the first coming. So, this light can be understood at the time of the first coming when this prophecy was fulfilled. When we go to Matthew 4, 12-17, Jesus begins in ministry in the land of Galilee. And Jesus said, that the prophecy of Isaiah 9 was fulfilled, referring to the coming of Jesus. The light that was promised to appear in Galilee was Jesus. As Jesus, the light has come to this earth, this earth, it now became a spiritual day. Therefore, in John 9, 4-5, it says that the time of the first coming when Jesus had come, it was day. Since the light of the first coming, Jesus had appeared, then what will be divided just like Genesis chapter 1? Yes, it is light and darkness. When we go to John 3, 18-21, the disciples who believed in Jesus' word and went to Jesus from Judaism, became the people of light. However, those who did not believe in Jesus' word and did not come forward to Jesus eventually belonged to darkness. Therefore, light and darkness were divided within the world of Judaism that believed in God. Then, why did the Jews not co go to Jesus during the time of the first coming? It was because they loved the darkness more because their deeds were evil. This, in John 1, 1 1-5, it says that the light shined in darkness, but the darkness did not understand it. It means that Jesus, the light, delivered the word to the Jews at the time of the first coming, but they did not understand. Here, there's something to think about. Were the Jews the people who did not read the Bible? They did read the Bible, but still in the eyes of God, 
They were darkness, which is a state of ignorance, of not having the word. Then was it the word of history that they did, they did not know? Or was it the words of instructions that they did not know? When we see in Psalms 119 verse 130, it says that unfolding of the word gives light and understanding to the simple. The unfolded word was like the light shining to the simple. Light was the word that becomes open, that proclaims the prophecy and fulfillment of the Old Testament. The ones who did not understand this revealed word was the darkness. When the light comes, it becomes day. When the light goes away, the night comes. It says that there is an era of day and an era of night in the Bible as well. Then let's find out the meaning of day and night. When Jesus came to the world as a light at the time of the first coming, that time was day. Then, before Jesus came to this world, then it would have been night, right? As we see in Isaiah 29, it was said that the prophecy of the Old Testament which God gave, it was sealed. No one knows its true meaning as it was sealed in parables. Therefore, neither the one who can read nor the one who cannot read knows God's will. Even if they read the words of these seal scroll, there is no one who knows God's will on this earth. It was an era of spiritual night. In the midst of this, Jesus came to this world 2,000 years ago and fulfilled the prophecy of the Old Testament which had been sealed in parables. And He delivered its true meaning and its physical fulfillment. So, at the time of the Jesus' first coming, it became a spiritual day. Afterwards, Jesus ascended and went to heaven. Then, this world became a spiritual night because Jesus, the light, left. Also, if we go to Revelation chapter 5, there is a book sealed with seven seals in God's right hand. This is a book of Revelation. It is sealed in parables, so no one knows the content of this book in heaven or under the earth. Therefore, even in the New Testament era, it has become an era of spiritual night when people cannot realize the Word of God. Then even in the New Testament era, which has become a spiritual night, one must appear for the day to come. Yes, it is the light. Thus, it is the revealed Word and the person with the revealed Word that must appear. In Revelation chapter 10, there is a small book that has become open coming down from heaven to earth. This book was sealed with seven seals but became open. Therefore, it's the revealed word. Jesus chooses one shepherd, gives him this revelation to eat, and tells him to go and deliver it to the people. As people who did not know the New Testament prophecy and its meaning listen to this revelation of the New Testament and come to this shepherd and realize its meaning, the era of spiritual day comes. Then, as we think about this, if we are listening to this revelation as prophesied in Revelation 10, this means a shepherd has appeared who has received and eaten the revelation and is now conveying it, isn't it? This shepherd appears as promise, so we can say he is the promised shepherd. Today, the people who came to the light by receiving this revealed word from this shepherd and those who do not receive this revealed word will be divided. They are called the children of light and the children of darkness. Then now, let's go back to the reference verse. If we see 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-6, you will see the children of light and the children of darkness that appear at the time of second coming. 
The children of light are those who have listened to the revealed word and came out. The children of darkness, they have not come out after the hearing the revealed word, although they may be believers and they may worship God. I pray in the name of the Lord that we'll all be the children of light by sealing the revealed word in our hearts that testify the prophecy and even the fulfillment of the New Testament. Next, let's look at the lampstand. Let's read Revelation 1 verse 20 all together. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Yes, thank you for reading. The book of Revelation is the prophecy of the New Testament that records the events of the second coming of the Lord. When we see Revelation 1 verse 20, Jesus appears with seven stars and seven golden lampstand in his right hand. Then, in order to recognize Jesus returned, we need to find out about these seven golden lampstand. Now, let's find out about it according to the Bible. First, the true meaning of the figurative lampstand, it is spirit and worker. Now, let's check this in the Bible. In the Bible, there is physical lampstand, but also spiritual lampstand. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of the physical lampstand. Physical lampstand play a role in brightening the darkness until the light comes. Let's take a look at the figurative lampstand that has these characteristics. The solid seven golden lampstand it began at the tabernacle that Moses made about 3,500 years ago. As we see in Exodus 25, 8-9, God commands Moses to build a sanctuary for God to dwell on this earth. It was made on this earth according to what God showed. This lampstand was in this tabernacle. When we see Exodus 27, 20 to 21, it says that this lampstand must be turned on with olive oil. And it was told to have it turned on from evening till morning. Then, when the light appears, this lamp, it goes out. And God ordered to abide by this as a lasting ordinance. This tabernacle and lampstand is also mentioned in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9 explains the tabernacle of Moses. Moses' tabernacle is mainly composed of two rooms. The part below is called the holy place and also called the tabernacle that prepares the way. And above, it is called the most holy place and the tabernacle of testimony. God has come on the Ark of the Covenant in this most holy place. Then, in order to meet God, one must go through the holy place and go to the most holy place. In the holy place, there's a lampstand. So one must go through the lampstand and go to the most holy place to meet God. This tabernacle in Hebrews 9 verse 9 is called an illustration. Illustration means it is a parable to hide the secrets of kingdom of heaven. Then, when we see this tabernacle, shouldn't we be able to see heaven when we look at it? Also in Hebrews 8 verse 5, it says that this tabernacle was a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. As Moses made it according to the pattern that was shown to him. So the reality of the lampstand in this tabernacle and the tabernacle itself can only be seen in heaven. 
In Revelation 4, 1 to 5, we can see Jesus tells Apostle John to come up to heaven in spirit and shows him the spiritual world of heaven. At this time, the organization of spirits are shown to Apostle John. So John sees an image like this. God is sitting on the throne, and there are seven angels in front of God's throne. Then what are these angels called? They are the seven spirits, which are also called the seven lamps. And in Revelation 5 verse 6, these seven spirits, the seven angels, were also called eyes. Then why are they described as lamps and eyes? Just as a lamp lights up dark places, these seven spirits are called lamps because they shine the light with the word to the darkened spirits. Eyes allow the whole body to see. Likewise, these seven spirits are called eyes because they play a role of inspecting this whole earth on behalf of God. What we must know here is that the Spirit works through people to work on this earth. When God tries to deliver His Word to His people on this earth, God works through His Shepherd. These seven spirits also choose people to deliver the Word to the people on this earth. The person who was chosen is also called the eye. In Isaiah 29 verse 10, the people that the seven spirits were together with, who are the prophets, were called the eyes. So the lampstand and eyes symbolize the seven spirits and the worker that the spirit is together with. These seven spirits work through people in every era. So next, let's look at the work of the lampstand at the time of the first and second coming. As we see in John 5, 35 at the time of the first coming, Jesus said that John was a lamp that burned and gave light for a time. John was called a lamp because the seven spirits were together with John. So John the Baptist played the role of the holy place. After the work of John, Jesus started his work. It says that Jesus had a greater testimony than John in John 5.36. If John's word was a lampstand, Jesus has a greater testimony. Therefore, it is a work of the light. And since God was together with Jesus, we can say it was also the work of the Most Holy Place. Then, after John the Baptist did the work of the Holy Place, thus the work of the lampstand, we can see Jesus appeared and started the work of the light, which is the work of the Most Holy Place. Through this, we can see that in order for the work of light to happen, there is something that must happen first. It is the work of the lampstand. Jesus, who came 2,000 years ago, ascended to heaven, and he promised to come back to this earth in John chapter 14. When Jesus returns, the work of light will begin on this earth again. In order for the work of light of Jesus to begin, there is something that must happen first even at the time of the second coming. Yes, it is the work of the lampstand. In Revelation 1 verse 20, when Jesus returns, Jesus appears with seven stars and seven golden lampstand in his right hand. They are called the messengers of the seven churches and the seven churches. Thus, the seven messengers that will appear at the time of the second coming will appear as a work of the lampstand. The fact that these seven messengers appeared 
means that the work of light will begin afterwards. If we go to Revelation 15 verse 2 through 5, we can see the temple or the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven is open. At this time, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is the work of light of God. It is the most holy place. In the end, the book of Revelation is telling us that the work of light will happen once again after the work of the seven people, which is the work of the lampstand. Then, I hope we can think about this together at this time. If this word that you are hearing is the revealed word, thus the word of light, then that means the lampstand has already passed. Then, did these seven people appear? Yes, they did appear. What did they do? How do their faces look like? And what are their names? It can all be testified by Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. I hope we can check the work of this light that appeared according to the Bible, and I pray we can participate in this very work of light. Next, let's learn about the blind and deaf. Let's read Revelation 3, 17 till 18. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and self to put on your eyes so you can see. Yes, you have read well. The words of Revelation 3, 17 to 18 are what Jesus said to the angel of the church of Laodicea. The angel of the church of Laodicea thinks he is rich. He does not need a thing. However, Jesus' thoughts are different. This angel actually is wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and does not know that he is naked. Then if he was physically blind, would he not know about that? This means he is spiritually blind. At this time, Jesus comes to him and asks him to buy salves to put on his eyes. A spiritual blind can only be cured with spiritual salves. To understand this word, let's take a look at what is a spiritual blind and spiritual salves. In the Bible, there is a physical blind, but also spiritual blind. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of the physical blind. Those who do not see are the physical blind, and those who do not hear are the physical deaf. Then what is that the spiritual blind and deaf cannot see and cannot hear? First, let's find out about the spiritual meanings of the figurative blind and deaf. This is a person who does not understand the word. In Isaiah 43 verse 8, God's people who have eyes are blind, although they have ears are deaf. And it's not only the people. In Isaiah 42, 18-20, the messengers of the Lord, the shepherds, are also called blind and deaf. Then, why did this happen? In Isaiah 29, 9-11, the vision that God has given, thus, the prophecy of the Old Testament is said to be sealed. Since it is sealed with parables, neither the one who can read and the one who cannot read, they cannot understand it, even if they read it or hear it. Therefore, the blind and deaf are those who do not understand the word even if they see and hear it. Then, 
What kind of word do they not understand? History and instructions can be understood by reading it, but the words of prophecy are sealed in parables, so unless they are open, they cannot be understood. Blind and deaf are those who do not understand the prophecy and the physical reality of the prophecy. These blind and deaf are not able to understand the word. Then what would they be teaching? In Isaiah 29, 11-13, they were teaching rules taught by men because they could not understand the words of the seal scroll. As they do not understand God's word, they say God's word would mean this and that with their own arbitrary thoughts, but they did not realize God's will. In Isaiah 35 verse 5, God promises at the appointed time, the eyes of the blind will be open, the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Since the book has been sealed, and the will of God is unknown, it is only when the revealed word appears that the eyes of the blind can be opened. This revealed word was delivered through Jesus at the time of the first coming when the prophecy of the Old Testament was fulfilled. Then, who were the physical reality of the blind and deaf prophesied in the Old Testament? When we see Matthew 15 verse 14, there is a blind who is leading, this is the shepherd. There is also the blind who is following, they are the people, thus the congregation members. It says both of them will fall into a pit, meaning they will go to hell. Then who are these blind, and why are they carrying a life of faith that leads them to hell? In Matthew 23 verse 24, Jesus calls the Pharisees and the teachers of the law the blind guides. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were leading the world of Judaism, and many people followed them. However, they believed without knowing the true meaning of the prophecy. At this time, as we see in Matthew 23 verse 13, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law shut the door to the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, and they did themselves did not enter, nor did they let those who wished to enter. Jesus, who was with God on this earth, was a reality of the kingdom of heaven. But they were carrying a life of faith that leads to hell because they did not go to Jesus. Also, they did not allow the people who wanted to go to Jesus either. To these blind men, Jesus tried to open their eyes by delivering the revealed word that testifies the Old Testament fulfillment. As we see in John 9, 39-41, to the people that confessed that they did not know the word of God and came out to Jesus, Jesus opened the word and conveyed its true meaning to them and even the physical fulfillment to these people, by that, they were saved. On the other hand, to those who are proud, claiming to know the word, Jesus revealed that they were actually blind, who did not know the word, and judged them. Then, we also, as we hear this word, we must think, with what kind of heart should we hear this word? If we did not know this word, we should also confess to God and Jesus that we are blind and come out to God, then God will open our spiritual eyes. In Revelation 3, 17-18, it says, to buy sows to put on the eyes because he was blind. Then what are these eyes slots? When we see Ephesians 1, 17-18, it is a spirit of revelation, the word of revelation, that allow the eyes of the heart to be enlightened. In other words, the salves that open the eyes of the spiritual blind is the revealed word. Then how would Jesus, who allowed this revealed word, 
want us to be together at this time? And with what kind of a heart? When we read Revelation 2 verse 7, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Wouldn't Jesus hope that we will open our ears, open our hearts, and come forward to the revealed word of the New Testament? Therefore, I hope that through this revealed word, we'll be the ones whose eyes are open in front of Jesus. Next, let's look at the clues. Let's read words of Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Yes, you have read well. The words of Revelation 16, verse 15 is what Jesus tells us. Jesus said that those who keep their clothes will be blessed. Then, what is this clothes that we need to wear to be blessed? Is it a police uniform? Is it, is it a wedding dress? Let's find out through the Bible. In the Bible, there are clothes that are physical, but there's also clothes that are figurative. Let's first define the spiritual meaning of this figurative clothes. The figurative clothes or robes symbolize the heart, actions, and doctrine, and the wedding clothes or fine linen symbolize the righteous acts. To find out about this in the Bible, let's first look at the physical characteristics of clothes. Clothes are worn to be formal in important places such as wedding halls. Also, we should wash our clothes with water and wear them clean. Let's take a look at the meaning of spiritual clothes that have these characteristics. First, in Matthew 22, 1-14, Kingdom of Heaven is like a wedding banquet. Even if you come to the wedding banquet, if you do not wear the wedding clothes, you will be kicked out, it says. Then if that is the case, we must be the ones who wear the clean wedding clothes, right? Then, what would be this spiritual wedding clothes? In Revelation 19, verse 13, it says, Jesus is wearing the robe dipped in blood, and it is the word of God. On the contrary, there's a clothes that we should never wear to go to the kingdom of heaven. In Revelation 17, verse 4, the prostitute, thus, the pastor of Satan, is dressed in purple and scarlet. This symbolized the doctrine of the prostitute, which is the false truth of Satan. We must wear God's clothes, which is God's word, and take off the false truth of Satan. Why does God tell us His words? Because He wants us to put these words into practice. The Bible tells us having the righteous acts and heart is to wear the wedding clothes. In Revelation 19 verse 8, it says the fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. When we correct our hearts and actions with the word of God, we'll be carrying a life of faith that will lead us to the kingdom of heaven. In Revelation 22 verse 1 and verse 14, we must wash our robes with the water of life flowing from the throne of God and Jesus in order to enter into the holy city. Eventually, in order to go to the kingdom of heaven, we must listen to this word and have the righteous acts and attitudes of our hearts with this word. We pray in the name of the Lord that we'll all be wearing this wedding clothes and be the people of heaven. Now we will complete after summarizing the key points. Light is the word of life. Darkness is the ignorance of not having the word. 
I and lampstand is spirit and worker. Blind and deaf is a person who reads and hears the word but doesn't understand it. Clothes or robes means the heart, actions, and doctrine, and the wedding clothes or fine linen is the righteous acts. Let me summarize the conclusion of today's word. The revealed word of Revelation is a light, which spreads through the promised shepherd who came as a true light. Through this, day and night can be distinguished. The time of the first coming, when Jesus came as a light, was the day, and it became night after Jesus left. As Jesus, the light, left, the words of the New Testament became sealed, and the world became a darkness of ignorance, full of only men's teaching, thus night. The work that happens today is like the work of the first coming. In this world, that is like night, the seven lampstands, the messenger that prepares the way, appears, and afterwards, the work of the true light happens. At this time, those who come out to the light, the revealed word of the revelation of the New Testament, will be able to open their blind eyes and deaf ears, and wear the wedding clothes and go to the kingdom of heaven. For the children of darkness, Jesus comes like a thief at night, and destruction comes on them suddenly. But for the children of light, it says Jesus does not come like a thief at night to them. Let us be the children of light who belong to the day and greet the Lord. Lastly, I hope we shout, we are one together in the sense being one in God and Jesus. We are one. We are truly one. Thank you for listening until the end. Let's pray together and complete. Father God, who is full of love and grace, we sincerely give all thanks and glory for your great grace and love. We are so grateful to God for guiding and gathering us, who are like a dark night and death, who are not aware of the word of this revelation. We truly give you thanks and glory. As we now understand more what is your will and receive the testimony of the prophecy and the fulfillment of the New Testament, please allow us to realize the will of the Father through this word and guide us to become one in this word. For all the pastors, theological students, and the saints who are listening to this word, we wish for your grace to be with them all. Please guide and help us so that we all become one and move forward together in this word. Father God, the world is now in pain and suffering due to the coronavirus. May this end as soon as possible, and as Father God reigns, please help us so that we can meet and share this word together. We give thanks and glory for all things, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our life. Amen. Everyone, what comes to your mind when you hear the word treasure? What do you think is this talent of gold that is mentioned here? The spiritual realm of heaven where God is at is made up of treasure. We'll find out exactly what is the kingdom of heaven, the spiritual realm that is made up of treasure. Let's find out about what kind of rich goes to heaven and what kind of rich goes to hell. Let's all realize the secrets of heaven. Everyone, did you receive a lot of grace from the word today? Next lesson will be lesson 9, the figurative treasure and rich. I hope we will all attend and realize the secrets of heaven and become a family of heaven together in the kingdom of God. The parables of the secrets of heaven, the testimony of fulfillment, online seminar of Shincheonji, are with all the believers around the world through YouTube. Although our country, race, and language may be different, we're all God's children who wish for heaven and read the same word. 
We hope you will follow the path of this word leading you to heaven till the end and reach the kingdom of God full of freedom, peace, and love. In addition to what you heard today, if you have any questions about the word of Shincheonji, please contact the phone number shown on the screen. We'll be happy to kindly guide you. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude and honor to God for allowing the word today. I will end all orders with the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Let us do the Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With this, we will complete the Shincheonji online seminar, The Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and the Testimony of Fulfillment. We sincerely thank you for being with us today.